we've just started. Um, we've been two weeks in called The Garden, an origin story. Everybody say The Garden. I see I'm going to have to teach you guys. I'm just going to have to coach you on how to talk back. Say it again. Say The Garden. Because in, I, I feel like when we look at Genesis, we can see that inside of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, and Genesis chapter 3, you can see so much about who you are, what you were made to do, who you're meant to be. You see it all locked up in there. There's some amazing just gold to be mined out of Genesis um, and those first three chapters. And in the garden of Eden where God uh, created man, placed him in the garden, this was what God intended for us. Us to be and hit the environment he intended for us in fact you see in Genesis chapter 2 the garden the very second book or second chapter of the entire Bible and the very last chapter of the entire Bible Revelation chapter 22 you see the garden and so the garden literally bookends the entire Bible because this is what God's intention was and then mankind fell into sin and the whole story as getting us back to this place of redemption to where we will be in a heavenly garden where there is no sickness there is no disease but God wants us to live in this place now to live in this environment in his presence now as Christians amen see how I'm teaching you yeah so let me I want to preach to you today um, I'm going to start in Genesis chapter 2 I'm going to jump through some different verses of Genesis so that we, just to save time, but I would encourage you to go through and really uh, go through and, and read Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, and Genesis chapter 3 as we go through this series. I think you can do that. Three chapters, and you can do that um, over the next month. You got time. That's your homework. Genesis chapter 2, verse 9 says this. And out of the garden, the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now coming down to verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it, you will surely die. So he's giving you this picture. In the garden there was, there was many trees, but in the middle of the garden there was the tree of life. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You see this picture of two trees. And you can actually follow this theme uh, throughout scripture. Because there's these two kingdoms. that were. There's the kingdom of God and there's the kingdom of darkness. And you can actually follow this throughout scripture as well. But you see the tree of life and you see the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I heard a guy say not too long ago. It's interesting that the, that the trees were in the middle. And or, in order for Adam and Eve to, to get to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That they would eventually take the fruit and eat it. It and, and cause sin to enter the world. They had to pass, through, pass by to get to the center of the garden everything else God created that was good. Everything God created for them. And they were lacking this contentment. Verse 25, I want to come to now, says, And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Where I come from, we say buck naked. That's how you say it, buck naked. They were naked and not ashamed. This is so valuable and so important to us. This isn't just for the, 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 the pictures. You, you get these images of Adam and Eve, right, growing up, and you see them um, paintings in the garden, and there's this beautiful garden, and there Adam and Eve are all like, oh, you know? But this is, this is important because it's not about their nakedness. It's about their unashamedness. It's about the fact that they were not ashamed. They were not ashamed. But then what happens when we go to Genesis chapter 3, which I'm coming to now, starting in verse 6, says, So when the woman saw that the tree, because the serpent had tricked and deceived Eve, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that it was a delight to the eyes. Anybody ever seen anything is a delight to the eyes? Come on. Dunkin' Donuts. Ben and Jerry's. Some people don't know what Krispy Kreme is. 
Can I get an amen for Krispy Kreme? I will not be the preacher who preaches on, on uh, Chick-fil-A. And that it was a delight to the eyes. And that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her. And he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together. There it goes. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves. Somebody say hide. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said, where are you? I believe God is calling to people today saying, where are you? Because Christians, believers, it's not just about it's not just about the lost, but it's about Christians and believers are hiding because of shame, because of fear, hiding. And he's calling to his people saying, where are you? Where are you? Where is my church? Where is the bride of Christ that is meant to be the hope of the world, that is meant to be in communities and meant to be the hands and the feet of Jesus? Where are you, church? Where are you? He's calling to us today. But yet we tend to hide. And Adam and Eve, it says, they hid among the trees. And so I want to preach to you on this idea today from among the trees. From among the trees. When I was, uh, when I was a kid, um, I, got, I had this argument with my mom, and I thought that life was unfair, you know? It's what kids do, right? This is so unfair. My kids even say it. It's, that's unfair. That's unfair. And I'm like, I'm just telling you to take a bath. You will, when you get older, you will not get girlfriends. I'm teaching you now. I had a youth group and there were stinky kids because their parents never told them to take a shower, to take a bath. Take a bath. Work out. Go to sport. Take a bath. Take a shower. Yeah, that's unfair. And it's always this little stuff. That was probably me. I don't even remember what the argument was about. But I did the thing that some kids do and said, I'm running away, going to another family. And then my mom um, said something like, go ahead, you know, because she's like, I, she's like calling my bluff, you know. And the pride in me said, all right. So what I did, I packed a bag. I'm not giving any ideas to anybody in our close ears today if you need to close ears. I packed a bag, took my bike, went and hid my bike in the woods, came back inside and hid in the closet. It's a good idea, right? Because I was too afraid to leave, but I was, I was going I, I to call my mom out on, on the bluff, and I just waited in this tiny closet like this. And... Eventually, just waited. My mom was doing dishes or something. Then eventually she came looking for me. She couldn't find me. She goes outside. I hear her outside. I, I poke my head out of the closet like this. Daniel! Daniel! And, and, and then I could see, like, the panic. She's like, oh, my gosh, he actually did it. And, 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 then, and then my heart started to break. I'm like, oh, my mom, you know, I don't want her. And, and I'm like. And eventually, there's like this overwhelming conviction and sadness. That, and, and, and I come out, of the, I come out and I'm like, so sorry. <laughs> like, here I am. And, of course, I don't know what happened after that. Probably, it's probably memories I've buried, whatever punishment I, I had after fake running away. But I believe we do this in life. Um, in our Christian walk, in our life, as we go through, whether we're a believer or not, this is, the, this is from the beginning in the garden. God designed us to be free. That's what the garden is. It's freedom. Freedom. But like me as a kid, I thought my freedom was running away because inside the house it was unfair. But by chasing what I thought was freedom, I actually ended up more locked up than I was when, I was, when it was unfair. I was sitting here in a closet, not able to move. And, and, and God, intention, his intention for us is to be free. 
He wants you to have freedom in your life. And oftentimes when we look at Christianity, maybe you've done this. I know that I look, used to look at Christianity this way and think, oh man, if I become a Christian, then I have to follow this rule, that rule, and that rule, and that rule. And that's no fun. Christianity's no fun. And there's, there, there, it seems to be rules and regulations. But honestly, what God has set before us, in the garden, there were boundaries. It was, a, it was an environment. It was a place. And when there's an environment and when there's a place, I can step out of that and I can step in that. And God gave mankind free will to choose. If he didn't give mankind free will to choose, then they wouldn't have ate of the fruit. They would have been robots. You and me would be robots listening to every single command. But it was in our, in our free will to be able to choose God and to choose what he's commanded us to do, that he loves us and he gives us freedom. Yes, there's boundaries, but those boundaries are your freedom. Those boundaries are the very thing that God, environment of freedom that he's caused. And so often we, we try to break out of the boundaries, break out of the truth, break out of the things that God has called us to do in search of freedom to find out that that's not freedom, that's bondage. My whole, my, whole, my whole life as a teenager was trying to chase freedom and identity because I didn't know who I was. And really what I kept stumbling into looking for freedom was bondage. I thought it was freedom because I got to do what I want. My mom, where were, you, where were you tonight? I was just over at a friend's house. When really I had been slap drunk partying all night. But that was freedom for me. I was free. Because I got to do what I wanted to do. I'm independent. You know? I, in, in, our, in our desire to find freedom, we end up in bondage. We choose to live in bondage by our flesh, and we believe that it's freedom. So many people today are locked up, bound up, thinking that they're thinking that they're free, thinking that they're, they're without boundaries and without rules, and this is freedom. But really, you may not be bound by other people's rules. You may not be bound by biblical morals. You may not be within those boundaries. But what you're enslaved to is your flesh and your desires. They, they, they did what was desirable to the eye. They did what was desirable to, doesn't that sound, does this sound a little bit like culture today? I, I feel like it. it I, I do, why, do you, why, why, why do you believe that? Why do you do that? Because it makes me happy. It's the, it's the, it's the pursuit of happiness. I just want to be happy. And then we even, as Christians say, well, God wants me to be happy. So, and this makes me happy. So I'm going to do this thing. And we do that in pursuit of freedom. And then what happens is we end up in bondage to our own desires and our own flesh and our own, uh, our own, our own slave, slavery. We, we, we cause ourselves to be bound up by our desires. And then you get in a cycle of bondage. The tree of life was there. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil is there. And so God instructs them, do not eat because they have freedom to do what they please, what they desire. They had the freedom to do that. But he set boundaries. Do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Otherwise, you will die. And he wasn't talking about a physical death. He was talking about a spiritual death. He was talking about a spiritual bondage. You will die. And they choose to believe the lie of the enemy, the serpent in the garden, and eat the fruit. And they probably realize, well, we didn't die. Well, look at that. What happened was a spiritual death. Sin entered the world. We said this, I think, two weeks ago. Have you ever wondered or ever been asked the question, why do bad things happen to good people? Why, why, why are we watching on the news uh, uh, thousands of rockets hit Israel right now? Why do bad things happen to good people? Because sin and death entered the world. 
we live in a fallen world because of Genesis chapter 3. This is why bad things happen to good people. Because we live in a fallen world. But God's desire for us is to live in his freedom. And he wants to eventually, Revelation 22, restore the garden, the kingdom of heaven. The new Jerusalem, if you will. The tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But we, we, we have, a, we have a, a group curriculum that we do called Freedom Group that we're going to, if you ever see us promote that, you should sign up for it. It's so powerful. But in it, I love at the very beginning, he actually talks about, in the curriculum, talks about the two trees, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And in your life, you can, he, he, t- he says, like, you can swing between both trees, You can live in this place of uh, I'm in the tree of knowledge of good and evil and you sit in judgment of everybody else and you sit in religiosity thinking, oh, I'm never going to be good enough. God, God doesn't love me if I don't do this, this and this and this. And you sit in this place trying to strive and you're in bondage and then you swing over here and then you're in the tree of life and you and you and it's true freedom. There's these two perspectives that you can swing into. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is, is one of judgment of your own life. It's one in, that's, that's bonded by your own desires. It's, it, it's full of shame. As soon as they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they were ashamed. They realized their vulnerability. They realized their nakedness, and they were ashamed. And then they hid. They hid among the trees. I thought, it was, I thought it was interesting that, so, it, so, so here they are, and this is exactly what takes place in our life, is when we do something wrong, we can give into this thing called shame, and because of shame, we hide and we retreat. And you don't become vulnerable with people, you don't become vulnerable with God, you, 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 you don't become open, honest, and you, you begin to hide the things because you were hurt, because people said something to you, because some, people did something to you. There's real pains in this room. There's real pains in our heart. There's real pains and things and tragedies that happen. I'm not diminishing that, but what happens is, is when we go through tragedy or when we buy into a rejection or when we buy into that, we carry this shame and what we can tend to do, what our desire wants to be is to hide. Are you following me? Are you with me? Amen? Okay. Only say it if you mean. But say it. Come on. I'm just kidding. You, you, we, we tend to hide away. There, it's, it's like Gideon who was beating wheat in a wine press. He was hiding because he was afraid. And we become afraid, maybe not of a physical enemy, but we become afraid of what people will think about us if we really show our real self. If people only knew what I did. If people only knew what was going on in my head. And we treat God the same way like he doesn't already know. We, 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 hide, among, we hide among the trees. We hide among the trees. They were hiding. They were hiding. Tarek, can I, can I use you as an illustration? Can, uh, yeah, you have the sound. I know you have the sound, but that's okay. And, and, and Pratish, can you come? Gabo, can you come? Sorry, I didn't tell you guys that. I, this was just like surprise attack. Here you go. Because um, I, I need trees. I need trees. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. These some good-looking trees. Come on. What kind of trees should they be? Hopefully not a weeping willow. No, I'm just like, I was trying to think of trees, you know. Okay, um, Gabo, stand here, right here, and then... And then Pratish, right where you're at, and then right behind here, yeah, like this. And so what happens is, is we get ashamed. We, 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 we do something, we live a certain way, and somebody has said something to us, and we get ashamed. And our first response and first reaction is to hide among the trees. We hide among the trees because behind the trees and among the trees, nobody can see the real me. Uh, nobody can see, nobody can see the, the me that's hurting, and because I let my heart out there, and because I got hurt before, I don't want anybody to hurt me again, so I, don't, I, I keep it back here. 
I keep it back here. And, 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 and I had a bad experience at church before. And so, and so church represents God. So that must be how God is. God must be very judgmental because his people were really judgmental. And so I don't even let God into my heart when he's calling to me. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And I, and I keep my heart from him. And I deal with these pains. And I've buried them so deep. And some of us can even bury things so deep that we've even forgotten. Man, I can't tell you. I've been praying, Holy Spirit, reveal it. Reveal Reveal to me if there's anything in my heart that needs, to be, that needs to be dealt with. And then memories come up that I haven't thought about for years because I buried them so deep. And I'm like, whoa, I didn't know that was there. I didn't know that pain was there. And because what we do is, is we hide them among the trees. And we do things like, here, check my messages. Not really, but, um, <laughs> but we do this. We, 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 you know, we hide. We hide behind trees. Behind trees. This could be a tree, <laughs> you know. This could be a tree. My, 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 j- just, just hear me here. My religiosity could be a tree. Yeah? It could be a tree. I hide behind my religiosity about how good of a Christian I am so that nobody actually sees how bad I am. <laughs> because I lied the other day and I don't want anybody to know. This isn't, this isn't what Jesus died for. He died so that you could come from among the trees. Are you with me? Stay up here just a little bit longer, guys. Thank you so much. When we hide among the trees, when we hide among the trees, God is crying to us saying, where are you? Where are you? Not that he doesn't know where you are. He wants you to admit where you are. That's why the Bible says confess your sins. Because he needed Adam and Eve, and he needs you and me to say, here I am. I'm hiding among the sin. I'm hiding among the trees. I'm hiding, I'm hiding behind my insecurities. I'm hiding behind my ability. I'm hiding behind my degree. I'm hiding behind my knowledge. I'm hiding behind my family. I'm hiding behind the fact that I'm extroverted. I'm hiding behind the fact that I'm introverted. I'm hiding behind... Something. And he says, where are you? And I just saw this picture, Adam and Eve hiding behind the trees. And then it was, as if, it was as if the tape fast forwarded thousands of years. And then there Jesus was. Dying on a tree. Dying on a tree. Because when I try to hide behind my sins... What I have to do is accept the fact that Jesus died carrying every sin, everything I've ever hidden behind. He died on it. He died with it and took it to the grave. Don't unbury it. Don't unbury it. He died on the tree so you don't have to hide behind them. Thank you, guys. Here's some good looking trees. All of which are single. I think. I don't know. I haven't heard. That was terrible. Don't do that. They'll never come up again. <laughs> Preaching 101. Come on. I've got I've to I've give you the points, and then we've got to close. From among the trees, three things, three things that, that set you free, and they all have to deal with Jesus on the cross. Number one, truth sets you free. He is the truth, he is the way, he is the life. John 8, 32 says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. But what we like to do is we like to follow our opinion and call it truth. <laughs> I, hope, I hope this series isn't offending anybody today. Jesus offended people and I'm sorry. It's the Bible, okay, it's the Bible, it's the Bible then the truth will set you free. He is the way. Jesus is the truth and the life. Well, this is true. This is true. No, he is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. This is what the word says. The truth will set you free because... Because it's the truth that, that are the boundaries that create the environment in which God wants us to live in freedom. 
the truth is the boundaries like my house was. This is unfair. Have you ever heard the saying, truth hurts? Truth hurts. And sometimes it hurts. Sometimes I'm reading this and I want to go, whoa, I didn't see that. <laughs> didn't see that one. Because it sometimes hurts. It sometimes causes me to go, whoa, I've been living that way. But when I come in line, as hard as it is, when I come in line and obedient with the truth of what it says, what he says to me, then I experience freedom. Freedom isn't always easy. Truth isn't easy. Truth is not my feelings. I need to allow the truth of God to set me free. If they just hear the truth, the truth, where are you? Where are you? They needed to hear the reality of where they were, the truth about where they were. And ultimately what they were doing is, is they were hiding from God's presence. Adam says we were afraid, so we hid. We were afraid, so we hid. But that's the very opposite of what sets you free. Number two, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. See, there's freedom in God's presence. You want to be free? God's presence. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, now this, the Lord is spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. When I come into his presence... And can I just maybe be a little practical as well? He is omnipresent. He is always present. He is always there. He's there. But what I have to do is I have to take the fig leaves that are hiding my heart, and I have to become vulnerable. And when I become vulnerable before the presence of God, my, my prayers aren't Oh, God, thank you so much today. These prayers aren't bad. Listen to me. Thank you so much today. Um, and can you just make me have a great day? And, and this and this. My prayers are, God, I'm a sinner. God, I'm broken. God, people at work don't see it, but I'm, but I, but I'm hurting on the inside. God, I, God, God, search my heart. See if there's any wicked way in me. God, I'm vulnerable today. God, I need you. I'm desperate for you. I realize every day, every day that I need you because when I try to just do me and try to do it my way, then I realize how broken and messed up I am and I'm desperate for you. I'm vulnerable for you. I have no secrets from you. You know everything and I'm, and I'm showing you my, my heart. He's the only one that if you give him your full heart, he won't break it. Be vulnerable with God. When you're hurt, don't retreat from God, retreat to him under the shadow of your wing, of, under the shadow of his wings, the Psalms say. My, um, I had a colleague tell me, um, tell me a story. He was, he was a teenager and he was playing with a nail gun at his house while his parents were gone. Woo! Hide your nail gun, Simmy. He was playing with a nail gun, he was building something, and, and, and his hand slipped and the nail shot right through his hand like this. And I'm thinking, dude, did you call, you called, you called the ambulance, right? No, no, no. I'm like, what'd you do, man? He said, I, I, I pulled it out. First of all, not a good idea, I think, right? Not medically, not a good idea, okay? He pulled it out. And because he was so afraid of getting in trouble for playing with the nail gun, he threw it and hid the nail, bandaged up his hand and never told his parents. He got shot with a nail gun and hit it. It's absurd. But that's the same thing you do with your heart when it gets hurt. Your heart gets hurt and you hide it from God. Because you think he's going to be judgmental when really he's going to come with a loving, compassionate heart. Say, I want to heal that. But yet we retreat and we hide behind the trees and we say, I don't want him to see. I don't want him to see. And the Spirit of God will shine a light on the dark places of my heart. If I allow God's Spirit, Holy Spirit, to come and shine light and come and be who Holy Spirit is, He will shine light in the darkness. In the book of Daniel, it says He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells in Him. There's deep things in our heart. There's deep things in my heart, and I need him to reveal it. Worship team, can you come?
and we'll close. That will also make me go faster since nobody's saying amen today. Just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm messing with you guys. I love you. You're awesome. Oh, I had a long flight, okay? Actually, it was very short. Both truth, truth sets you free, and God's presence are only possible through Christ. Because he's the way, the truth, and the life, Christ Jesus. And we wouldn't be able to experience and encounter God's presence if it wasn't for the fact that he died on the cross. In the Old Testament, the, God's presence was confined to the temple or confined to the tent of meeting, to the holy of holy place, where there was a veil. And as soon as Jesus died on the cross and he said it was finished, the Bible says that that veil tore, but it tore from top to bottom. Because what God did and what God was saying is now because I now because of Christ, the blood shed on the cross, the last sacrifice, I I can now dwell in people. They can be the holy, holy place because before we were stained and broken. But because of Jesus, and only because of Jesus, I can be in right standing with him, and he can dwell in me. The only way God's presence can dwell in you is the fact that Jesus died for you. So you want to know how you can be free. Christ alone sets you free. Christ alone sets you free. It's not free thinking. It's not clearing your mind of meditation with meditation it's not it's, I'm, I'm just trying to be so honest today because I think we need some real honesty it's not it's not a bigger bank account it's not the new it's not the new phone it's it's not a relationship it's not it's not living away from your boundaries that sets you free, Christ alone sets you free. Christ alone. Galatians 5.1 says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm. Why did Christ set you free? For freedom. Because he wanted you free. He set you free to be free. <laughs> he didn't set you free so you could just do, I, I, need, I need somebody to do something for me. No. I, I set you free because I want you to be free because I love you because I can't stand to see you hiding in the closet thinking that you've run away and thinking that you're free but really you're stuck and you're bound I have set you free so that you could be free true freedom is found in Christ alone That's why he says in Matthew 11, he says, verse 28, come to me, come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. And I, it's hard work hiding behind trees. It's hard, it's hard work hiding insecurities. It's really hard work trying to be somebody I'm not. It's hard work trying to live a life on one front and trying to fix a life on another front. And it's hard trying to hide things from God. And it's hard trying to run away. It's hard trying to be Jonah and run from my calling. It's hard work. And all he's saying is, it is for freedom that I set you free. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You won't find rest in the trees. You won't find rest in the trees. You won't find rest behind that thing. You will only find rest in me. I am the Sabbath. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life, he says. Come to me. Can you stand to your feet today?
I love what, um, there's, a, there's a book, I just heard this story, there's a book of Martin Luther used to have his own little Bible college, he used to call them table talks with the people he was discipling, and one of the stories that he tells at his table talks, because there's a, there's a book full of these table talks, he says, <clears throat> Martin Luther, um, he, he, he was sitting at his desk studying, and he said on this one instance, this never happened to him, he, was visit, he said, I was visited through the door by the devil himself. And, and, and he, he sits there at his desk and he says, what do you want? <laughs> and the devil starts saying, oh, you think you're a good husband? Look what you've done. And you know what Martin Luther does? He takes out the, the ink, the, the quill, dips it in and starts, okay, you're right. You think you're a pastor? Yeah, you've done this, 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 okay. And he starts going down the list of all the stuff that Martin Luther's done. And he writes it down. Eventually, Martin Luther says, is that all? Anything else? The devil says, nope. He has this big list. And he says, okay. And then he writes on it, paid in full by the blood of Jesus. And he takes the ink and throws it at, 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 at the devil. And there's still, he says there's still an ink stain on the wall behind him. Paid in full by the blood of Jesus. Christ alone sets me free. Christ alone. It is the cross. He died on the cross on the tree so I could come up from among the trees. I don't have to hide behind him anymore because he died on it. Amen. I want to pray for you today. I did something at a men's conference I was just speaking at. It takes, it takes vulnerability to be free. And so what I'd like to do is I'm going to have, I'm going to have some, uh, I had them up here somewhere. The, um, if we could find the little index cards, maybe they're under the, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that them? Perfect. And uh, this, is a, this is a great youth pastor trick right here. But uh, I want these today. I want these today to represent your trees and my trees. And I just think maybe as we go into this worship song, if God is ministering to you saying, you need, there's a tr some trees you need to come from among. You need to be vulnerable before God then I, I want you to maybe come write down whatever that thing is that you have been hiding behind. And then I give you full permission. I'll clean it up. I want you to tear it up as soon as you write that thing down. You can just throw it right here. And we're going to come up from among the trees today. So maybe if we could get some of those pins that's in that um, practically that's in the thing there. And we'll have them up here for you. You can come grab one of these. What is it that I'm hiding behind? Am I hiding behind my, my career? Am I hiding behind my family? Am I hiding behind my insecurities? Am I hiding behind uh, a habit? Am I hiding behind an addiction? Am I hiding behind something? This is between you and God. Nobody has to see you. So you don't have to show anybody else. But he's saying today, where are you? Come up from among the trees. So I want to pray for you, but as we worship, as the worship team plays, just as you feel led, you can come down, grab one of these, put it on it, tear it up, and throw it on the ground. Just as a faith step to say, I'm coming out from among the trees. I'm accepting God's righteousness, paid in full by the blood of Jesus. Father, today, I thank you that you are calling. Where are you? Where are you? I love you, son. I love you, daughter. I want you to be free. I want you to be free. That's why I went through it, he would say. That's why I went through it. So that you could be free. I don't want to see you bound. I don't want to see you hurting. I don't want to see you hiding. I don't want to see you hiding your wounds because you think. I'm going to judge and condemn. 
It's the enemy that's the author of lies. He's the accuser of the brethren, not the Lord. He says, come to me, all you who are weary, heavy laden. Thank you, Jesus, today. Set us free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, you're here today. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. In Jesus' name, amen.